Tolan the Shattered is a very intriguing character. He was once a guardian, but upon death was transformed into a magic ball of energy that traverses the Ascendant Plane in search of secrets of the Hive, Darkness, and beyond. Today we discuss the whereabouts of Toland and some of the mysterious messages he's relayed over the years. Tolan the Shattered was a member of Eris Morn's fire team. The first six guardians that went into the Hellmouth in search of hive answers and a way to end Crota. As that tale goes, everyone died except for Eris, who was able to escape and make her way back to the city. As for Toland, he was sort of a guide when it came to hive knowledge. Eris would often come to him for advice, and sometimes Toland's curiosity got the best of him, like in the Hellmouth when he went deeper for answers straying away from their fire team and got killed by the Deathsingers and their song. After Tolan the Shattered's presumed death during the ill-fated mission to the Hellmouth to defeat Crota, he embarked on a remarkable and complex journey beyond the veil of mortality, into realms beyond the comprehension of most guardians. His body was destroyed by the death song of Ir Yut, the Death Singer, but this event did not mark his end. Instead, it transformed him, enabling his consciousness to survive in the Ascendant Realm as an Ascendant Soul. This transformation allowed him a unique existence, tethered neither to the material world nor the finality of death as understood by humanity and the Guardians. So Tolan looked like this, a floating ball of energy, darkness, or taken looking energy that just floats around and sort of exists, does what he wants now in this plane in between. Now I'm not sure if any other characters have existed like this in the Ascendant Realm or beyond, but Tolan's the only one we hear about, which is an interesting thing to note. He's special for some reason. In the Ascendant Realm, Tolan observed and occasionally guided the Guardian's efforts against the Hive. During the battle against Oryx the Taken King and the Taken King expansion, this was a big moment for this. Gameplay-wise, you would see him floating around the Dreadnought in various spots. There was some dialogue from his journal, but most of the story came from the lore entries. Same thing we saw right before Phobos fell apart. Might be some kind of probe. Expect trouble. One of the big moments here was Toland expressed his frustration after Oryx's death that we didn't take up Oryx's throne and continue down that path to harness the sword logic and gain ascendant power of our own. From the King's Fall card, how did you find your way into the King's cellars? How did you even recognize that benighted draught for what it was? Do you not know that the Hive pursue light precisely for the purpose of devouring it with slavering jaws and slick greedy gulping throats? How did you take, or rather, untake the blighted light that Oryx gathered to offer its sacrifice to Akka and ignite it so that it burned and burned the darkness? It was barely light anymore, but you took it, and when you took it, you did not keep it, you set it free. You fools, you disastrous, bumbling squanderers, it's not right. Who now shall be first navigator, lord of shapes, harrowed god, taken king? Not you. You might have been kings and queens of the deep, but you have toppled Oryx and you have not replaced him. There must be a strongest one. It is the architecture of these spaces. Why are you leaving? This reaction from Tolan highlights his deep belief in the sword logic and the hive, the philosophy that dictates only the strongest should rule. Oryx followed this sword logic, and Tolan thought we should too because we killed Oryx. Tolan would guide us through the Ascendant Realm once more in the Red War and Forsaken, through Mara's throne world Eleusinia, where he would often relay some cryptic quotes, some of which we'll talk about in a bit and also during the quest for weapons like Bad Juju. All is not lost. The unconquerable will and study of revenge. Immortal hate. Let me teach you. The coming clash will be so much more entertaining if you are prepared for it. 
In Destiny 2 Season of Opulence, Kallus entered the Ascendant Plane and found the bad Juju. He took it back to his Leviathan, trying to lure Tol in there to solve his Crown of Sorrow problem with Galron. And once our Guardian found and opened the Tribute Hall, this led to our quest to obtain it in Destiny 2. Our causality, what a trip. If you believe your weapon wants to murder all existence, then so it will. Call it a little bad juju, if you please. I leave you here. Claim what has been lost. You have stepped in and out of sharp-edged worlds, hewn gods into blunt factions, twinned yourself with the powers whose names cannot even be held in the language of little grey cells. You think yourself very high up on the Pyramid of Contumely. If only you knew how high that pyramid goes. Higher than I knew when my radiant killer unsung me from a biological squalor. Or when I witnessed a royal secret turn death into a chrysalis higher than I described in my journals, or told to our mutual three-eyed friend. Higher than even I, sailor upon the sea of screams that I am, can yet see. Perhaps I will tell you about them. In Ghost Fragment Darkness 3, Toland explores deep existential and philosophical questions about the nature of existence, the absence of inherent purpose, and the fundamental role of conflict and competition in shaping the cosmos. This came out in Destiny 1, this lore card of course, but it does show hints and thoughts of the final shape. Tolan rejects teleology, the idea that there is a purpose or reason behind existence, instead emphasizing a more mechanistic, Darwinian view. He explains the universe's existence through a series of victories in an endless competition atoms over the primordial broth, stars and galaxies forming, life emerging in primal seas, and eventually the rise of civilizations. Tolan suggests that existence is a game where the most ruthless strategies eventually win out. This is not due to any inherent purpose or design, but simply because they are the most effective at ensuring continuation and dominance. The universe in this view favors no morality or purpose other than the survival and proliferation of the most adaptable and powerful. The closing thoughts present a bleak outlook on the possibility of a more cooperative or peaceful existence, dismissing it as a dream of small minds. Toland implies that such ideals cannot withstand the harsh reality of the universe's competitive nature, where only the most ruthless can ultimately thrive. To me, sounds kind of like Gardner and Winnower, right? Peaceful Gardner, an endless competition, and a Winnower at work where the most ruthless strategies eventually win out, destroying what does not need to exist. Here are some interesting quotes from Toland. The void is not the darkness. The darkness is what it is. Void energy is like all things of this universe. It is light seen through a prism. A fundamental force, the vacuum between stars, the absence of everything else. Just try explaining that to someone who's never walked the void. We fear the darkness because we believe it is wrong, evil. No, no, no. There is one reason to be afraid the recognition that it is right. This curse is a prototype, I'm sure, a step to something far more cunning. This is the shape of victory, to rule the universe so absolutely that nothing will ever exist except by your consent. There is only one end to the universe, only one conclusion, what the gods of this place call the last true shape. The shape needs no followers, no one to enact it, to preach it, to practice it. It is and will be. There's nothing else, hive or no hive, the end is still the same. So why are you here? The last true shape is not a belief. It has nothing to do with faith. It's pure logic, self-evident, self-proving. 
So Toland's quotes there are mysterious. Again, these were a long time ago. I think most of these around the time of Forsaken, so things could have changed in the story, but some of them still kind of hold up. The gods of this place where Toland is the ascendant realm see the universe only having one conclusion, that last true shape, the final shape. Maybe the quote where he talks about fearing darkness but darkness is actually right is just talking about the forces in general. We can wield both light and darkness for good or evil. And he does have lots of quotes about the void. He even says this is where the traveler came from. This is the shape and the point of the tooth. Nothing has ever lived that will not die. Now I fly between green black suns in the labyrinth beyond Crota's god star. This is the overworld, the sea of screams, where the throne universes of the great hive fester in eternal majesty. I move among them. I map the shapes and connections of this world. The traveler came out of the void that surrounds all things. Thus we know that the void is full of power. Thus we enter the void without fear. Small minds will call your abilities blasphemous. They will compare you to the abominable wizards of the hive. But you will not be held back. Gifted with a traveler's light, armed with the secret physics of a lost age, you will tear reality asunder. You will fear nothing, and nothing will not fear you. So Toland is a weird one. He has some interesting beliefs regarding the sword logic and creation. He's also gifted and guided us to certain weapons like that bad juju and even Deathbringer. Deathbringer even suggesting we use a song like the Deathsinger song to fuel and create this weapon which is pretty cool. So Guardians, there you have a little overview on Toll and the Shattered, his current whereabouts. He's still out there in the Senate plane as far as we know, just roaming around, studying what he can, and his thoughts on the final shape. It would have been interesting to see him pop up in some more recent content like Season of the Witch, maybe Season of the Lost, where we are exploring that Ascendant Realm more often in the activities, but maybe we'll see him again someday. If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.